Hey guys, Jim from Import Image Racing and today is the big day. We finally put our CT Tuning Pro Tune on our VB chassis WRX. I cannot wait to feel the power. We finished putting all of our performance parts onto our VB chassis WRX. So if you're looking for a recap of what we have on the vehicle, be sure to check those videos out before we continue watching. But if you're up to date and ready to go, today we're going to be putting the CT Tuning Pro Tune onto the access port and we're going to show you how to do that. Once again, if you've been following along, you've seen that we put all ETS goodies under the hood. But if you do follow the channel, you notice that we had a Cobb 3 inch stainless exhaust on the car. We did opt to change that back out for our Titanium Noble 3 inch exhaust because I am just looking for the most power we can physically make. So let's talk about how you get your tune. Once you purchase your power pack from importimageracing.com, you're going to receive an email. In that email, you're going to fill out all of the parts that you have put on your vehicle. You will send that email back to importimageracing.com, and then we will send you a preliminary tune from CT Tuning. Once you receive that preliminary tune, we're going to install it onto the access port. Then we're going to set the access port up for data logging. We're going to show you what parameters to measure. Then we're going to send that tune and those data logs back off to CT Tuning. Once they review the tune, they're going to send you your final tune back, which we will install on the car and we're ready to give it some beans. So with that said, let's take our access port and load our preliminary tune. The first thing we're going to do with our access port is hook it up to our computer. So you're going to want to find your access port and your data transfer cable that plugs in to the side of your access port. And the other side is your USB for the back of the computer. Once the access port is connected, we're going to be looking for the access port manager. Now, if you don't have this already installed on your computer, you're going to want to head over to cobtuning.com, click on software and access port manager. Then click on which operating system you're using. Once the access port manager is downloaded onto the computer, we're going to open it up and you're going to see a screen a lot like this one. We're going to look for the search for maps tab and click it. And then we're going to get the email with the tune that we have from CT Tuning, and we are going to drop that into our Maps on My Computer bar. Once our tune is loaded into our Maps on My Computer, you're going to come over here to this vertical arrow and click on Upload Selected Maps to Access Port. If you have any problems uploading your map onto the manager, be sure you hit the Updates tab on here or call Dane and he will gladly help you out. Lastly. We're going to hit our updated selected maps tab and that's going to transport our custom tune over to our access port files. At this point, we can disconnect the access port and take it to the vehicle. Now here we are back at the car with our access port and our preliminary tune loaded. Now before you ever try to flash one of these cars, you're going to want to make sure that we have a battery charger hooked up because if this while flashing drops below 12 volts, we're going to have a pretty bad day. But we have our battery tender hooked up and ready to go, so we're going to hook our access port up to our OBD2 port and start our flash. In our particular case, we have a dash mounted access port holder. So we're going to put that on, turn the key to the ignition, but do not start. Next, we're going to scroll down and find the tune tab. Hit the center button. Then we're going to want to change ECU map. We're going to find our reflash only CT 2022 WRX map. Click OK. Make sure that our battery charger is up and working. So we have 12.1 volts currently. We will hit continue. And here we go. The magic starts. Once our tune is completely loaded, we are going to turn off the ignition. Wait for the computer to reset. Then it's going to ask us to turn the ignition back on and hit the continue. Finally, it's going to ask us to turn the ignition off one more time while it cycles through. Then after about 15 seconds, we can restart the vehicle. Since this is the first official fire up since we've had any of the parts on, we're going to make sure everything's nice and tight before we get going on a test drive. Now that I know everything's secure and nice and tight, we're going to get behind the wheel, start setting up the access port for our logs, and then we're going to send those logs back over to CT Tuning. We're in the car and we've let it warm up for about five or 10 minutes just sitting at an idle. 
So in your email, you're gonna receive two attachments. One is going to be the physical tune. The other one is gonna be some parameters and a walkthrough on what to set up in your data logging to get the most accurate tuning possible. Now that list of data logs might not be the same for your car as it is my car, depending on what kind of modifications we've done to the vehicle. So walking you through individually might not help you. Just make sure you read that email thoroughly and you understand which parameters to select or deselect before sending your data log. With that being said, we're ready to take this thing out and do three separate data logs in the conditions that were listed in that email. For our first set of logs, we're going to have to try to keep the car between 45 and 55 mile an hour for several minutes. Now, depending on where you live and what your traffic patterns are, this might be the hardest one to get. But please be patient because the numbers that Clark gets on these logs is what determines how good your tune is going to drive. Okay, well it looks like we have our cruising log done. So now we're gonna move on to our partial wide open throttle log. So what that means is we're gonna put the car in third gear and do a wide open throttle pull between 3,000 and 5,000 RPM, making sure that we don't hit over 20 pounds of boost. That was it, on to log number three. The final log is an idle log. So we're gonna let the car sit just like it is for two full minutes while we take the log. But I'll tell you what, it is super hot down here in Florida, so we're not gonna be sitting in the car with no AC. After all of our logs are finished, we've reconnected our access port to the computer. We've reopened our access port manager, and if you come take a look for our filter, we're going to select, instead of maps, we're going to scroll down to data logs. And then these are going to be our three data logs that we just did. So we are going to batch select them and save selected files to my computer. We're going to attach those three data logs to our original email with our preliminary map. We're going to send that back over to CT Tuning and then wait for his response for our final map. So here it is, our final revision. Full disclosure, this is our third revision of the map. So we would start, send our logs over, Clark would send us another revision where then we would take the logs again, upping our boost level and upping our RPM range. We send it off and then finally we have our final map. So we're gonna go ahead and install this onto the car. Another thing I can't stress enough, having a battery tender on here while we flash this. This does take a while and they are known on the VB chassis to kind of kill the battery, which can lead to big problems. So we have our tender hooked up, we're gonna install our map and I cannot wait to feel this. Well, my initial thoughts are the tune is extremely smooth. It's very deliverable. I really enjoy the way it just drives. So let's not even worry about the power quite yet. Let's just worry about the drivability. I mean, this thing comes down to idle just fine. No, like it doesn't rev hang. It doesn't do anything weird. Um, it really kind of feels good. It shifts nice. Like, I mean, to me, this feels like a stock car just driving it around from stoplight to stoplight. That's all fine and dandy, and I'm really excited about this ProTune. But I'm sure what you guys really want to know is how does it perform under full throttle? <laughs> this thing is a ripper. I am telling you, this feels so good for the amount of parts that we have on this car. I'm not sure you could have more fun for less money. I think this thing is awesome. So that was a lot of fun. I mean, my initial reactions are this thing is awesome. It drives great, it performs fantastic. Uh, but what you really wanna know is what kind of numbers did this thing put down? Well, full disclosure, it is all of 100 degrees out today. And with our dyno numbers, we put down 388 wheel horsepower and 407 foot-pounds of torque. Now that at 100 degrees out is fan 
fantastic. I think this is the easiest way to make 400 or around 400 wheel out of almost any Subaru I've ever dealt with. And this being such a well-performing car and making that much usable and drivable power, I mean, this thing is awesome. I do think a limiting factor to get us over that 400 horsepower uh, mark is two things. Number one, uh, if we had a front mount intercooler, we could probably get into the 400 range, uh, the low 400s on 93. And with that being said, ethanol. I think even with this setup, if we threw a little bit of ethanol in the tank, I guarantee you this car with the top mount would make between 410 and 415 wheel on a cooler day. And you can't ask for more power for the amount of work that we put into this car. This is a two thumbs up all day long. To top it all off, we're gonna do some draggy hits to compare our Pro Tune with all of our modifications to our pre-performance numbers. Also, if you're into the whole draggy life thing like we are, not only can you get the draggy, but take a look at this cool 3D printed mount that we're gonna to stick to the window. This is also available through Import Image, so we'll throw the description down below. Once again, that felt great, but let's take a look at the numbers. I have my handy dandy sheet, so let's just start from the beginning. This vehicle with no tune, with just the map that the vehicle comes with, as you would get it from Subaru, the best we could get 30 to 70 mile an hour was a 5.37 seconds. Not that bad, but let's talk about the Cobb off the shelf map. So uh, we tuned in at about 4.78 seconds, which is the best we could do. Now that was around an 80 to 83 degree day, pretty respectable, but you wanna know the numbers for our Pro Tune. Well, those numbers ring in at 4.41 seconds from 30 to 70. Now that is a four tenths difference, which is pretty good in my opinion. Also, with it being all of 100 degrees today, about 20 degrees hotter than what we previously tested at, I believe wholeheartedly that we could get about a half second difference from 30 to 70, and I am super pumped about that. So that pretty much wraps up our video today, and I think that this is a pretty good start on modifying these vehicles. The performance parts that we put on this car, coupled with the CT tuning tune, I don't think you could be happier. But keep a lookout for more performance and aesthetic parts for your VB chassis and more. So for thousands of parts just like this, plus tons more, be sure to hit up importimageracing.com for all of the best deals on the web and in the world, and we'll catch you on the next one.